So you just played a role, whether it was an audition or live on set, and it drained you. It was emotionally draining. It called for all the things, all the feels. How do you let it go? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Hollywood Bound Actor Podcast. I'm Christine Horn, the booking magnet. And listen, I want to talk today about rituals to come out of roles or rituals to release roles. If you're new here, I want to welcome you to all my replay watchers and listeners. What's up? Replay watchers. Love you guys. So, you know, everybody has a different process about how, how they like to do this. So again, y'all know how I say eat the fish, spit out the bones. Shout out to my Caribbean massive. This is my way. You know, I also coach a lot of actors and sometimes when I'm coaching an actor on a particularly emotional scene, I I notice sometimes there's a block. There's a block in getting to like going there, as we would say. And especially for an audition, because some actors I know can feel like, It's just the audition. I don't really have to go there. I know it says she tears up or she weeps or he breaks down or he does whatever. And sometimes people don't feel like they have to go there. And my theory is, well, if you don't show casting, you can go there in the audition. How will they know you can do it on the day? How will they know you can do it when you're on set? And in my personal opinion, they can't. I was raised, my mentor, Freddie Hendricks, taught us in high school at Tri-Cities High School in Atlanta that, you know, you have to go there fully. And going there fully is just to also so that you know what that is going to entail to to uh, to bring that emotion up within you. How are you tapped in? You know, on this podcast, I've started to talk a bit more about content creation, not content creation, Lord, that shows you where my mind is. <laughs> That's where I've been all day making content, character creation, and how important it is to dive deep into your character analysis, your character breakdowns, like really allowing yourself to have fun and creating this, this person that you are about to portray. And so if you do deep character development, you're going to be able to find more things, more triggers that you can use to help serve you in your scenes. Now, that's just my take on going there. I believe you need to know that you can go there and casting needs to know that you can go there. Um, Now, of course, I'm not stuck on tears versus showing emotion. that's, That's a conversation for another day. I'm saying sometimes it can just say that this woman lost her husband and she's weeping. And I've seen actors just so afraid to cross the line because of many reasons, you know, it's different for everybody, right? For some people it's past trauma. For some people think, Hey, if I go that far, I may not be able to come back to me. Um, for some people, they just don't have, they haven't tapped into the reservoir of their own personal emotions. They haven't dealt with their own feelings, their own, their own personal uh, traumas, issues, fears. And so they are, can't even connect. And also sometimes when you're judging a character from the outside, instead of trying to find their truth and what makes them who they are, you know, their flaws, their tics, their habits, all those things. If we're looking outside of ourselves, down onto ourselves, judging, it's really hard to find common ground and find the humanity in a role. So I think no matter what role it is that we have, We owe it to ourselves and we owe it to the character to go as far there as we can. And before I tell you how I come out of it, I do just want to offer um, one thing, you know, because, you know, I've actually coached a lot of therapists, actually, as, as actors. And I found that therapists, counselors, people who, you know, are used to hearing about a lot of trauma really have a hard time opening themselves up, opening their hearts up, allowing that kind of emotion to show because they're used to not showing it. Uh, Even some people who I've coached in the military, that kind of energy. 
Um, and of course, if you've had something that has personally happened to you and you get a script and you see yourself on the page, sometimes it can be pretty frightening. I've been there. But it's a wonderful thing when you see a performance and you're like, wow, like, I don't know if that was just acting, but that I felt like that person this actor really went there. Like maybe they've been through this before. Like, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if we've been through it before or not, or we're just portraying it really well. But it's just that feeling I want my characters to have. I want my characters to feel so organic and so truthful. And so one of the ways that I do that, and one of the ways that I do to protect myself is by pretending that I have on a full body uh, jumpsuit or unitard. Imagine that there's a zipper at the top of my head and I get to unzip. So this zipper right now has got Christine. Well, it's got Christine with the wig on in this, <laughs> in this video, but we get to unzip. I get to unzip the bodysuit of Christine. And I, this is physical what I'm doing. And shout out to those of you who've actually taken in-person acting classes, have gone to acting school or college. You're used to these kinds of physical exercises. We can call this, you know, peeling the onion, there's all kinds of names for different things, but literally I like to come out. I like to come out of this imaginary bodysuit, you know, and I'll step out of it for, with my feet. And then it's like, I, I, t I take that imaginary suit with my hands. I'm actually doing it. And I put it somewhere and I, I look at it and say, you are safe. And then I imagine that there's another bodysuit of this new character that I'm about to portray and tell their story. And then I step into that. I step in from my feet, pull it up over my legs, over my butt, over my arms, come back over my head, zip, I zip it up. Now I am whoever I am for that day. And now I'm walking around in their literal skin. That is it. So I must tell their truth. I must do whatever I need to do. Now, again, this, this, this talk today is not about how you get into character. I'm not talking about that. That's for another day, but however you get into character, whatever you need to tap into, whatever, um, trigger songs you have, whatever, uh, substitution you're doing, whatever your personal process is, that is what I'm doing while I'm in this suit. Now, of course, especially for highly emotional scenes um, or triggering scenes, right? Traumatic scenes. It is going to affect us as human beings. Like there's no way around it. If I'm screaming and running and my breath is changing and my eyes are watering and I'm like, I'm conjuring up this energy of whatever this character needs, there's no way it doesn't affect Christine, the actor. It doesn't, there's no way it doesn't affect my nervous system. There's no way it doesn't seep into my brain and into my cells and into my body. Like there's some, there are some times I've played some roles where after I get done, I, I have to tell the director, I just need a minute. Like I just need a minute. And I can, I already know myself well enough to know how I come out of roles. So I can now, I'm at a place where I can warn, um, or not warn, but give a director and crew a heads up, give my first AD a heads up. Hey, I'm going to need, after we do this take of this scene, that's going to require this, I'm going to need 15 minutes or I'm going to need, like, give me a, another, give me a second before the next setup. Like I'm in a place where I can say that because I know what it's going to take. Cause I go there and it takes me a minute to come down. I, there are some actors and I have some friends who are like, Oh my God, they, they're, they're, they're so emotional. And then they're like, cut. And they're like, yeah, anyway, about that game. <laughs> like, nope. That's some people's process. I've worked with some of those amazing actors and I'm like, that's not me. Like I, I have, I can't, I can't shake it like that. And I almost feel, and this is not a judgment. This is just me trying to understand people's processes. I almost feel like the actors who are able to pop out, give this highly dramatic scene and then pop out and like into laughter. I feel like it's a defense mechanism. I feel like it's a, that's their protection of it getting and seeping into themselves because they may really feel it. And then they just, to, to not feel, they just start, ha ha ha, I'm different. I allow myself to just keep feeling it. And then until I 
eventually come out of it. So let's talk about that. So one way, again, could be through laughter. And again, you're going to find whatever this is for you. If you've actually gone there for yourself, think about how you felt afterward. Did you feel drained? Did you feel like you needed a minute? Did you feel like you couldn't shake it? Listen, we hear about actors who, you know, roles stay with people for, for months and years. I remember listening to Columbus Short's, um, Columbus Short, amazing actor, you know him from Stomp the Yard and a bunch of other movies and Cadillac uh, Records specifically. And he talked about that character in Cadillac Records in his short, uh, his book. I listened to it on Audible and how that character lingered with him. And I heard him telling that story about how it lingered, really, the, the bad habits too, like the drinking and the, you know. And, but I remember watching him thinking he was brilliant in that role. I was like, give this man an Oscar. Like, seriously, like he is one of my favorite. There's so many favorites about that movie. Jeffrey Wright, Columbus, like, oh, just them together. So juicy. If you haven't seen it, watch Cadillac Records. I love watching movies and television shows as masterclasses. And I remember watching and thinking, God, he's brilliant in this. But then hearing him tell his story many years later, you know, it's like, oh, wow. Like everybody has their process. Some people go all method, go all the way in, in this way. And all in looks different for everybody is what I'm trying to say to you today. So you're going to have to feel your way through what your all in feels like, but your all in needs, in my personal opinion, needs to do the job. It needs to tell the true story. It needs to serve the character. So a way that I come out for myself is first, first and foremost, like let's, I shot something in South Africa, a TV show called classified. And in one of the scenes, I have a very emotional breakdown and afterward, I just, I had already, again, I had already warned my director cause I knew the con I knew how much it took for me to get there. I have trigger music that I play in between takes you know, like I am, I am right there. The emotion is just right there. And so I, I told him, Hey, I'm going to need a few minutes, you know, so you may want to, after we do this shot, I'm going to need a few minutes. And I allowed myself to weep. Everyone had left the room. They were, the crew was moving around and I allowed myself to weep. Hell, wail. I had to purge it out. And I didn't care who heard me or I didn't give a shit about that. That was my way of getting it out. Also, something I do for myself, I do this just in naturally when I'm at home, but I also do it on set. I will light a candle and just honor myself. Like, okay, that's how I come back to myself. It's almost like go toward the light, <laughs> Carol Ann, but like in a good way. <laughs> Like go toward the light. The light like resets me. Also, then I listen to soothing music, very soft, calm music, usually with no lyrics, just very Zen tones to bring my, bring me back down. I take deep breaths. When I'm able, I sit down with my feet planted. I put my palms on my thigh. And this is something that I learned from one of my friends, Jessica, who's a life coach years ago. And I take deep breaths. I take three deep breaths. I do that three times. And then I say, this is not mine. I release it and I set it free. This is not mine. I release it and I set it free. I say that three times. And by then I have calmed down. My nervous system has got back in check. My breathing has slowed. And that is the beginning of my, that is the beginning of my personal ritual process. If I'm home, like let's say this was an audition and I wasn't on set. If I'm home right after this audition that has worked me up, because I go there in my auditions, I will run myself a hot bath and soak, light candles, soak, uh, 
you know, burnt incense, just anything to zen me back to Christine, to Christine energy. Those are my personal things. Um, also, I may play something that is like a, a comedy, like I'll put on um, a stand up um, or I'll watch a rom com. Which doesn't always work because sometimes rom coms will put you through the ringer before they make before they come back together at the end, <laughs> and sometimes I don't need that extra emotion because I get too invested in the characters. So stand up is pretty usually pretty easy, or something like Golden Girls or like whatever your favorite sitcom is. Like have a playlist, even some clips on YouTube or something where you can go and that you know will give you an instant laugh. Now I'll be honest, depending on the role and what triggered me. Sometimes it takes me a couple of days to shake whatever I shook up, whatever I am loosened up within me. What I'm sharing with you is my ritual to come out. What I don't do is finish my audition or finish set being on set and just be like, all right, guys, good night, everybody, like, and act like it didn't happen. That doesn't work for me. Again, you'll have to find what works for you. But that is my process to start coming out of it. I remember when my ex-husband passed away, um, as I've shared with you all, he passed last September. And I think this is probably the second audition I had before 2023 ended. I didn't book it, but it was like a wife of a husband who was sick in the hospital. Child, when I tell you, it didn't take nothing. I mean, nothing. And then I had to be careful not to overdo it. You know what I mean? Like this scene didn't call for that kind of wailing and crying and carrying on. <laughs> but just the thought of seeing, creating this woman and then her husband, right? So sometimes you have roles, you're just afraid to go there because you know once you go there, ooh, you're going to go there. But for me, I find that that's the beauty in the work that we do as actors that we do get to use our pain, our joy. We get to use it and pour into our characters and, you know, let it accent the characters and everything that we're bringing to it. And it is, <clears throat> it is those moments and those personal life experiences of yours that make your audition stand out and be one of a kind. So, um, that's what works for me. I would be curious to know, comment below and let me know what is something that you have done to um, release your role. I'm really curious because listen, you might have an idea that works, that may work for me um, and, or anybody else. You can help us. So check, uh, you know, please comment below and let us know. And hey, remember that you are not alone and we have our Facebook community called Hollywood Bound Actors. So you can join us in the Facebook group. I go live in there occasionally and do some special stuff just for our community. Thanks so much for listening and tuning into the Hollywood Bound Actor podcast. Remember to shine bright like the star that you are.